and this is how we are going to be discussing today and uh, you need to understand that when you have something like this and the words in law of indices we call this base you need to understand that and we call this power and the first thing you need to understand and another thing you need to understand is if you have for example 2 is power 3 over 2 is power what? 2 is power 5 when you discover that they have the same base they are having the same base what you can do you write one of the base then 3 and there's plus here there's invisible plus there's invisible plus then it's coming up in your division become minus plus 5 that in closing brackets why is this minus coming up because it's division therefore you have 2 raised to power 3 minus times plus will give you what minus 5 and that basically will give you what we have 2 raised to power 2 2 raised to power what minus 2 that will give you 2 raised to power 2 usually when we divide we subtract the exponential of the words in core basis where the bigger exponential is same and then this particular you can turn this you need to understand that this particular thing you can turn to inverse is similar to raised to power what? 2 yes therefore just like you have s raised to power minus 1 it seems as was 1 over x as in what has happened the power sign will change from minus what to plus that is just the case and now what has actually happened we need to understand that as well then for example you can have you can have another thing you can have 2 raised to power 5 over 2 raised to power 2 you can have 2 raised to power 5 over 2 raised to power 2 now the same base you just have to pick one of the base which is 2 then have 5 then this time means what minus the invisible as plus 2 there therefore basically this will be 5 then when you have plus minus times plus will give you what minus and you have 2 and this will give you 2 raised to power what 3 and that will give you 2 raised to power 3 now what basically what we're saying is is when you have you just have to understand for example we have times 1 over as we suppose minus 3 this this one is in terms of as we suppose 3 over 1 because 1 over 1 over 3 that is when you have 1 over since as this then when you have 10 when you have x raised to the power what minus 3 x raised to the power minus 3 since as was 1 over x raised to the power what 3 start to understand the inverse when you have x raised to the power minus 3 since as 1 over x raised to the power 3 basically if you have x raised to the power minus 1 that what I've said before so this is 1 over what x I will always say but when you have we have 1 over s with super minus 1 automatically this will give you what x yeah these are things you need to understand first that when you have when the power is minus you can have as one over you can have it as one over s basically if you have like i have 2 super minus 2 i can have it as one over two super 2 what will happen to the power the power will change from minus to plus and that will happen here it's changing from minus 1 to what plus 1 when you have it over 1 1 over s with super plus 1 yeah but when you have 1 over s with super minus 1 that will give you what x basically what it means is what this thing simply means is you have 1 divided by what s with super minus 1 and this particular one we know that uh, this same thing is 1 divided by 1 over what x then it must be in changing the sign x will go up while one will come down over one basically that will give me what x therefore what we are saying is one over x raised to power minus one will give me s meaning that one over two is to power what minus three 
automatically this will give you what you're supposed to read. That's what we're saying. The power is what changing. Then when you have two raised to power minus three, then it seems as one over two raised to power three. That's happen. Turn it towards from minus to what plus this kind of thing you need to strongly understand when it comes to what and this is the power will change when you wrote when you make it one over that particular what number that is the first thing and uh, basically it will be talking about more of this particular thing this you are going to achieve all this particular what learning objectives Basically, at the end of this chapter, you should be able to require you the of indices for multiplication, division, and zero is, and what reciprocal, which we've been talking about. Simplify expressions that contain products of indices and functional ones. Indices. Then solve simple equations containing indices. Then you should be able to express and interpret numbers in standard what form. Find the logarithm and what anti logarithms of numbers greater than one. Then use of what? Use of logarithms to solve problems. Basically, this is what we're going to be doing. I've explained it for you. Yes, yes, it was the same thing as what I've explained in the beginning for this particular class. Yeah, for another thing you need to know is it's what I'm bringing out for you. The first thing is anything with super zero, you should know that we give you what? One. Then s is not equal to what? So we can't have 0 raised to the power 0 giving you 1, no. Yeah, but if it is 5 raised to the power 0, s raised to the power 0, automatically it's going to give you 1. Then you need to know that the square root of, if you have, if you have 9, if the power is half, basically what it means is root. And the root of 9, we give you plus or minus what three. Then if I have four raised to power what half, four raised to power one over two, the same thing as what root of what four. And basically, I need to know that root of four is plus or minus what two. Then if I have eight raised to power one over three, then I need to know basically that this talking about cube root of what eight. And basically, it means what can you multiply in three times that will give you eight? I think two times two times two will actually give me what eight. Therefore, the cube root of eight will be what two because you can multiply two in three times to give you that one eight. Then, if you have, you can have okay, let me say I have 16, one over four. Still one over four. This simply means fourth root. This means fourth root of what? Sixteen. When we're talking about fourth root, what can you multiply? Four times that will give me what? Sixteen. I think two times two times two times two will give me what? Sixteen. Because two times two is four. Four times two is ten. Two is sixteen. Automatically, fourth root of sixteen will give me what? Two. But basically, you just have to understand this uh, before I go deep. Then you need to understand as well that the, that the bracket of minus any number raised to power 2 will give you that twice that particular number. Therefore, if I have minus 2 squared, automatically it's going to be what? 4. What I get for is minus 2 times what? Minus 2. Automatically, minus times minus will be plus. Then 2 times 2 will be what? 4. Basically, that what it means. But it's totally different from when you have minus root what? 9. Minus root 9. So, mathematically, here root 9 is 3. Therefore, we're taking one side of that particular side. I said, you know, for the root, you should have, you should have dot plus or minus. But in this particular case, we are taking the plus side of the roots. Therefore, and this sign in front, we take the shape. Therefore, root of 9 will be 3. 
Therefore, but because of this minus, you make this what minus 3. It's totally different from when you have root of 9. So 9 will be plus or minus 3. Just like, but you need to know the reason why this is because they want this as root of 1 over 4. And s raised to the power 1 over n, which is, for example, 16 to the power 1 over 2, for example. That will be n root n x, which is simply means plus root 16, for example, to start for one number only. And this particular one start for another word, start for one number only. Therefore, but if s is standing for one number only, that will basically can say root 9. Is three. I can say with four is two. It's going to take you one side of that particular number. But if I have s squared equals nine, I have to find s. You know, basically, basically we have s is to power two equals to what four. Then to find s, what can I do to remove this square? What I can do is to square, take the square root of both sides. You know. If I take the square root of both sides, this are uh, this cancel, this will cancel this square root. This power 2 will cancel this square root, giving it x. Then what will not be the square root of what? 4. The square root of 4 will be what? Plus or minus 2. It's totally different from what is root 4. That means taking two sides of the what? Of the value, the two sides of the number. Meaning it's taken, s can be what plus 2, or s can be what minus 2, taking two side feet. You need to note which is totally different from what is the square root of 4. For the square root of 4, I can say 2 categorically. I want to see what is the square root of minus 4. Yeah, I can say categorically is what minus 2. Another thing you need to know that student tends, student tends to what? To forget what the word logarithm really means. Emphasize is the following. Emphasize what the following. In numbers, if 10 is to power 2.301 is equal to what 200, then log 200 to be 10 we give in this. You have to understand what we're talking about there. The log. 200 to be 10 automatically is going to give me what this 2 2.301 and if I have to turn it back according to the logarithm if I have to turn it back this 200 this log 200 to 10 equals 2.301 you need to know this base of the logarithm and this is the number itself log this 200 to be 10 equals to this therefore this base we have raised to power the answer you have 10 raised to power what you have automatically will give me what 200 and log 200 to be 10 will give me this therefore how do i get 200 is by taking the anti log of 2 points 301. I have to think the anti log of 2.301. We take 23 under 0 to form 1. And then do in works log base 10 of 200 is, is the exponent of what? So which 10 must be raised to give 200? 10 must be raised to give what? 200, which is the number. Therefore, you need to understand. And basically what we're saying here is a very simple thing. If I say log 4 to be 2 is equal to what? 2. Basically what we're saying here is 2 raised to power 2, 2 equals to what? 4. Meaning if I take this, if I take the in base 2, this particular thing, what I'm saying here is 2 to the power 2. Automatically, in this particular case, I can make this 2 to be s because log 
4 to base 3 is equal to 2. Fine. Simply means, according to what we have, simply means we are taking the anti log, but it's not in base 10, this is in base 2. Therefore, you might just say, okay, thing is in base 10. Let's make, how do they get this? I say, okay, let's make something like this log 4 to base 2 equals to what? X. Then in this particular case, this is what base, this is the value that is equating to this number. Therefore, we just see number which is 4 equals to base to the power of the value outside. And in this case, 4 is equal to 2 is to power of 2. I want to increase it to that what? Base. Therefore, base can cancel base, then x will automatically equal to 2. Therefore, what they are saying here is log you know, 2 to base 2, which is same as 4. Log 2 is to power 2 to be 2 is same thing as taking the power to the front, saying 2 log 2 to be 2. And when you have log with the same base, it gives you 1 automatically. When you have log 2 to be 2, will be 1. If it is log 10 to be 10, will be 1. Automatically, have 2 times 1 that will give you what? 2. Basically, what we are saying here is a very simple thing. We are saying in what the log base 10 of 200 is the exponent to which 10 must be raised to give that 200. So, then, then to forget what anti log means is if, for example, 10 is about 2.301 is equal to 200, it means we are taking the anti log. The anti log means that we want to know what the answer of this is as basically what it means we want to know what this particular answer is in base 10. Therefore you just check 23 and so you need to forget why they had logarithm of numbers. If it is multiplication, multiplying the numbers, if they multiply the numbers and then why they subtract logarithm of numbers basically if they divide the numbers by each other then Emphasize that logarithms are exponents of what? 10 in this case, and that the first two exponential law. How? Let's quickly look at the first exponential law of this particular logarithm. Now, the first one is you need to check we have the same base force. Let's see if it is ax multiplied by a y when they have the same the two things have to be considered the base and the sign in between same base with one then the sign is what multiplication then gv x plus y basically if you have a raised to power three multiply with a raised to power four basically yeah this is the base and this is the power. What is it? Is plus is multiplication. It means the power will be added. You have three plus four, and that will give me a raised to the power of seven. Basically, here yeah, it means you have a, a, and a. That is just the implication. And you are multiplying it with what? A, a. A and what? A making four A. One, two, three, four. And when you do all this, you are going to have all four A raised to power seven. But it's easier for us when you have when you have the same base, then the sign in between them, in between the base is multiplication, then the power will be added. But if it is in another case when you have A divided by A raised to power X divided by what? A raised to power y. Automatically here you're going to have a, but here it will be what x minus y. What happened? The sign will change. If it is division, it will change towards subtraction. If it is multiplication, the power will change towards addition. Therefore, in this particular case, if you have a raised to power 6 over a raised to power 2, 
basically what this means is a raised to the power 6 divided by a raised to the power 2. And in this particular case, the same base, then what's the operation between them is what? Division. It means the power will be subtracted. You have 6 minus 2. And that will give you a raised to the power 4. That will give you what? a raised to the power 4. Yes. So, since logarithm to base 10 are the exponents of 10, we add the logarithm of the what? The numbers. If multiplying the numbers, if you are multiplying, meaning if you have log 10 to this 10 multiply by log 100 to this 10 basically this should be log 10 they are open bracket say if we had the logs of the number if multiplying the numbers they are multiplying If it is plus here, then what happened here? It should be 10 times 100. And if it is division, 10 to the same minus log 100 to the same. What would we say log 10? Then you have 10 divided by what? 100. We subtract the logs of the number. If we divide the numbers by each other, Yeah, you are going to see more of this particular example when you have plus, you multiply, when you have uh, subtraction, you divide. When working out the numbers with certain power, students tend to forget why they multiply the logarithm of the number with the power. Why they multiply the logarithm with the power. Again, emphasize this exponential since log to the base of 10 are the same as the exponent of 10. Which we give or well, basically what we're saying is we have a uh, n these are both power automatically right? it's going to be a n times n and that will give me what a m n and basically if i have a four it's about two, there are two power there. If I'm going to have a four times two, and that will give me a is power eight. Then when I have basically when I have now a is power six, automatically we need to understand that a is power six. Okay, close it. This square root means power of half. Means the power of half. We know if it is cube root, it should be mean the power of what? 1 over 3. Therefore, in this particular case, it should be a. Then it should be 6 times 1 over 2. Then invisible one here. Because both of them are power. Then in this particular case, you are going to have a. 2 year 1. 3 3 is to power 3 to power 3. Therefore, you need to understand that when you have cube roots, it means, for example, you have cube root of 8, it means a is to power 1 over 3. If we have 4 root of a, it means a is to power 1 over 4. Then, if I have square root of a, it means a is power 1 over what? 2. Good. And if I have a is power 2 and I want to go to remove it and turn it to s, it is square both sides. If it's square both sides, this, that will give you 8. 
if I have x raised to the power 3 and I want to get my x, I'll say keep take the cube root of both sides. Take the cube root of both sides, I'm going to get what x. Basically, because we know that x raised to the power 3, this cube root is equal to 1 over what 3. And in that case, we have two power. S will be what? 3 over 1 multiplied by 1 over 3. 3 year 1, 3 year 1. Therefore, you are going to have S raised to the power what? 1 in that case. Therefore, basically, when you have S raised to the power square, S raised to the power 2, and you want to get your S, you want take the square root of anything you are given. If it is every super three and you want to get your hands, take the words, keep root of anything you are giving.